You know, my kids were the ones that were kind of keeping what me. What if hip. you can't help being hip? I that's yeah. you know, well, that's, that's my problem. That's You're a curse so that, hip. You just that, can't. Listen, the jokes you know? I tell in class are to entertain myself. It's their fault if they don't get. <laughs> Yeah. No, my my kids kept me hip because they kept me all, all the all the sure. music and stuff. So. Yeah, one of them and asked me what an emoticon memes. was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. Oh, wow, really? Ouch! Yep. Yikes! Well, kids, before emojis, we had to make our own fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you ever opened a tab on a browser? <laughs> they don't know what file structures are. It's the, what's it's a browser? The oh my god! Yeah, gosh. what's a browser? God, is that yeah. like TikTok? <laughs> do you guys remember zip drives? I do. Oh, yes. yeah, I have sure. had one. I have. Yeah, I had two jazz. in my closet Back in somewhere. My day. That was how we got um, files between to clients and stuff and to printers. Yeah. When I worked with uh, with um, you know in an advertising agency, it's oh. like oh my jazz drive. Wow, mm-hmm. you sound like you <laughs> work for a very ritzy place. <laughs> we use those at Tech TV zip drive, zip and we, jazz drives. We, we use Rolling those in the, there. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Jazz mostly, but jazz, yeah. jazz. Yeah, I remember more jazz more than zip, but. Oh, no. Zip oh, drives yeah. was the way to go for us. Zip drives were the happy medium, but until CDRs were like a thing <laughs> that you could buy for 80 bucks. Yeah. And until then you I, could I, burn I, CDs, I, yeah. I know I've told this story a million times, so I apologize to anyone who's heard it, but there was that day Robert Heron at Comdex came back to our little Blair House Suites media room with a USB thumb drive and was Whoa. like, check this out. <laughs> just, yeah. You just, just plug it in and it installs its own driver. Han yeah. Choi was, uh, How was like... How much did those a, cost at the time? I don't know. They weren't that expensive. They, they were like 30 or 40 bucks. I thought they the were time. like hundreds of dollars, like the big no, ones. No, no. If you got like one that was... Oh, like, I'm just oh, talking about the thumb drives. Yeah, not the... Oh, not okay. The no, yeah. like the little... Uh, yeah, the, the thumb drives... I remember Han Choi was like, he became a televangelist or evangelist for it. <laughs> that televangelist. So I like, remember when you got great. like thumb drives yeah, I mean, that had televangelist and them. evangelist yeah. sometimes are. I know, used to go know, to CES they, and that was my, that was my thing. To, you I just come back to, from CES with dozens of thumb drives. Yeah, no, is I would CES collect. CES your I would SFN? Like yeah. My, how big is CES? Could. Um, Very big. Hundreds of thousands of people. Oh, wow. And how expensive is it to attend as a human? Like, as a I not I don't press? know. I've only yeah, ever gone as press. press. <laughs> yeah, it depends. I know it's like a few like, hundred If you're dollars, a company though. who's presenting, if you're press, oh, yes. if you're oh, if just trying to walk the floor, I mean. If you're a trades person. Probably a lot. Then it's like, I don't know, five, six hundred dollars, I'm going to guess. I don't really know. Yeah. It's actually hey, not that bad. It's that. I Thank mean, you, if you for the get super your... sticker, Laminar Rainbow. Woo-hoo. Yes. Kicking us off right. I mean, like, there's a lot of medical stuff at, at CES. Health. Yeah. I saw a robot <laughs> microscope. I don't know if I well, sent no, that picture. Well, no, I'm just thinking, to... like, if if Dr. Nikki, if you ever... Do you guys want to send me to CES? Like... I don't know if I can do it, though, because this 25,000 people at SFN almost did me mm-hmm. in, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I could do 100,000. Yeah. yeah, but you get in, in and it, out. It's, it's definitely going to yeah. be uh, a lot of people. That is and I don't part of love CES. people, you know? I like people, but I don't like pe- being around 100 I like, people I don't know. I like people, yeah. but I don't like most people. I really thought that I had Alzheimer's disease, disease walking out of SFN because they're like, do you know this name and this name? And I was like, I, I don't remember One anything. Minute. <laughs> I, don't I do I want Alzheimer's, uh, Alzheimer's degrees now. And also Alzheimer's degrees. Yeah. I got a degree. <laughs> I'm credentialed. Altoids. Uh, Altoids degree. I guess I won't run time then. I will after the interstitial, after the 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 Tom stop. Uh, yeah, you don't. I mean, I guess you could try to wrap up. You know, like oh, it's getting a little long, but it's not. Yeah. Necessary to be. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's more. It's, yeah. It's more of uh, like hey, it's thirty minutes of uh, the oh, chubby is, or something. I think my it's comments just, only go into YouTube and it's not Friday scaries. I'm working on it. Friday scaries. <laughs> Friday scaries. I already I have Sunday scaries. Well, no, Don't give me extra weekend. scaries. <laughs> Ten seconds. I like the weekend. <laughs> there are ghosts out there, Nikki. <laughs> it's That's October. My, those are my friends. <laughs> <laughs> have a good show, everybody. Good day, Internet. Good day, Internet. Good day, Internet. Uh, hello, good day, Internet. Hello, good day. 
internet. This is good day internet for Friday, yeah. October eighteenth, twenty twenty four. It's a good day, and we're on the internet. Maybe having a good day. Maybe we've not. got uh, we got Sarah, Sarah Lane. Uh, thank you, Tom. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I am here. We have uh, uh, the uh, Cleveland Guardians fan extraordinaire, Len Peralta. Yes, going tonight. Let's go, guards. From Alabama, Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Hello, I am not an AI. Because you can tell because I didn't That's win the That's what Nobel an AI Prize. would say, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the, the uh, show's producer, Roger J. Hey. hey! And we got a super sticker on YouTube Ooh. from C-Spawn. Thanks, C-Spawn. Put oh, it on any nice. car and you can yeah. fly. <laughs> Two super stickers. Amazing. Look at that. Um, yes, today is a little different. Uh, it is still made possible by you, the listener. Uh, High Tech Oki. Chris Zaragoza, Jim Hart, uh, new patrons, Kyle and Philip. Welcome, Kyle and Philip. Way to go. Way to go. Way to go. Yeah. Uh, but as you might have guessed, this is uh, a supersized Good Day Internet. It's Good Day Internet wall to wall from beginning to end, an experiment to see what happens if we just spend more time hanging out and chatting with the live audience and patrons in a little more of a laid back fashion. If you're like, oh, did you kill Daily Tech News Show? That seems like <laughs> no. a bad idea, Tom. No, no, it's uh, it's still happening. It's uh, already there in your DTNS feed and on Patreon. So uh, look for that too. Tricked you. How, how are you feeling, Sarah, <laughs> about the new GDI? Well, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, you know, it's Friday. So, you know, on Friday, I like to, I like to let loose a little bit, wear a mm-hmm. hat, you know, do the, do all the things. <laughs> but, crazy um, shit. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm, not, I'm a little crazy, Fridays. guys. I'm a little crazy right now. But, um, but no, I, I think, um, this is a fun experiment and I'm really, really, really looking forward to everybody's feedback about, you know, do we want more of this? Yeah. Would we like that? So listen to the DTNS we did uh, and enjoy this. Nikki's going to uh, talk to us still. And in fact, we're going to be doing a DTNS segment inside of GDI. It's a little inception. inception. Um, what What is it you're going to be? You went to a, like the biggest neuroscience conference in the world or something? I went to the CES of neuroscience there you called go. the Society for Neuroscience Meeting SFN. And, and where was I- this? This was in Chicago last week. I'm still recuperating. Yes. And I <laughs> chatted with a bunch of people on boots on the ground. You'll hear from my wonderful audio with background effects and everything. Hmm. And I asked them uh, how they use tech in neuroscience because I figure you guys would like that. So we've yeah. got all kinds of different different types of people, let's say. Cool. I am yeah. looking forward to that. Um, one thing when we talked about doing it this way today uh, is several people are like, well, what about the news? Um, that is in daily tech headlines. It is in daily tech news show, but I, you know, should we take a minute at the top to just kind of look at what's out there on tech meme and Google what's news and yeah. Uh, yeah. And Sarah, you did daily tech headlines today. What was the big story there? Um, well, there were a few, um, I think, I think one of the biggest was that blue sky, um, social network, um, uh, mm-hmm. that would be, you know, considered an X alternative, um, you know, but but a social network on its own um, said that it added 500,000 new users in one single day. Dang. That that, oh. that that was after X announced plans for some changes that not everybody was uh, were into um, getting rid of the block feature, um, some terms of service stuff. But I, I, I wanted to ask the crew. I don't use Blue Sky. Um, it, it's not because I don't like the network. I just find that, you know, when when the whole sort of like, okay, you know, if you don't like X, where are you going to go? Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of went to Threads and I have a Blue Sky account. Um, I'm, I'm on Mastodon as well, but it's like you can only do so much. You know, I mean, in, you know, yeah, in so many hours of yeah. the day. So it's like, where are you going? So it's, I'm interested to know, you know, what what the blue sky in specific resurgence is all about. I'll I, be honest, I have an account, but I rarely go there unless someone links me to something I, that's there. Yeah, I find more people I would fo- I want to follow on Mastodon and threads than I do 
blue sky even though i i prefer i actually prefer the blue sky experience like the interface and all that it's just mm. there isn't the same criticality if that's a term of people that i would interact or follow on that platform versus mass on and of course x and is isn't still that, the big isn't one isn't that funny like it, if Blue Sky looks and feels exactly like, you know, old Twitter, for example, you know, where you're like, I want that. It doesn't, though. But, it doesn't. But like if it did, if your friends aren't there, you're yeah. going to go yeah. wherever your friends yeah. are. That's I'm honestly happening. still on X because like when I was at the conference, for example, most of the people that I was hashtagging and, and, and linking with were still on there. So. Yeah. It's got its, it's like, own hey, like, internal coffee? momentum. You, it still does. Yeah, scientists you, are kind of still there. You but need, you need, less. you know, a lar- uh, not even a large, but a critical mass of people that people mm-hmm. want to follow, whether they're celebrities, politicians, or just, you know, people that are. Everybody in your subculture needs yeah. to go there. Like, the that's what Vicky is, subscri- is yeah. describing. Like, yeah. the neuroscientists have not left X yet. So you can't. Or at least enough are less left that it's still viable. A lot of them have left, honestly. It's kind of sad now. (laughs) But I will say I use... The last couple of years have been a very, very strange sort of like, you know, my social network exodus is very personal to me because of my beliefs. And I I think, you know, we should all do that. But then, like, where do you go? And is everyone else going to that same place? The answer There's is too many no. Options. no. No, it's it's yeah. a churn. We're in that churn phase, and I will mm-hmm. say part of the churn is that my usage of X has dropped at least, if not more, fifty percent. No. Like I do not yeah. go to it in the same way I did I even five even years ago. I don't even look at it. I used I look to at first it thing in the some, morning, like mm. like clockwork. I yeah. look at I, it once or twice a anymore. week. Yeah, yeah. I feel the same way about threads. Um, mm. I think the Thread, algorithm threads is, weird. is problematic as well. Yeah. yeah, I'll open up threads and it'll be like some vague story from someone that I don't know. And usually the first post on that is who? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> like, 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 I'm like, why am I getting this? I don't get that on threads. That's weird. Oh, I do well, see the, here's the like, person I don't know, but then I'll see like, oh, Len responded to them. That's why I'm seeing it. That, problem yeah, with no, threads. Not even that, yeah. uh, and I only use threads on desktop, so it might be different on mobile. But the problem is every time you log in, it's the for you feed rather than mm-hmm. the following mm-hmm. feed. Following. Mm-hmm. You, you have the choice to choose. But it always starts with for you. And sometimes, I don't know, if I, you know, it's early in the morning and whatever, I'm just like, who are these people? Yeah, I, I right. don't that know is, what they're Clinton talking says about. he follows threads, uh, people on Mastodon now. So it doesn't even need the well, thread account. And, just and sees them there. Yeah, there's a little bit more of that. Yeah, You know what's interesting? As, as an artist, I'm on Instagram. Yeah. So that's what I'm using. And Instagram leads right into threads. Um, which is what's easy, right, to connect. But I, I got to tell you, just in general, my social media usage has dropped. You said fifty percent, Roger. I'm saying like I'm I'm barely on anything anymore. Mm. Maybe I'll post something to Facebook, maybe. But no, I'm 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 kind of well, happy that I'm this I'm is out of, of it. <laughs> this is interesting though, Len, because you know you're an artist. You're obviously you know sometimes uh, you know you're. Um, you're, you know, hired to do specific work. Um, mm-hmm. I would Promoting think that stuff. being, you know, on a social network would be something that is really, really important to you. Yes, yes. And that's so, the So that's what the happens problems. when yeah. you don't want to be on a social network anymore? Well, you know, that's sort of the problem, right? Because... You get your life back. <laughs> I do get my life get back. Life However, back, but do you get your pocketbook back? Right. So that's my that's the issue I'm going to be dealing with around around the holidays is that I do these mm. um uh cards, you know, these holiday cards for people. It used to be that I got a lot of impressions and uh you know, um just stuff from Twitter when it was Twitter. Yeah. Uh and now uh I don't I don't even know where to go to talk about stuff, honestly. I mean, I guess I can go to my Facebook page, my not my per, not my personal, but my professional Facebook page, and mm-hmm. and post something. But and that doesn't mean that you know I'm I'm probably going to have to um, you know uh, pay to play for that, mm-hmm. which yep. I don't yeah. know if I'm definitely. necessarily on Facebook. There's, you definitely just kind of yeah. a disaggregation of 
of a few what about platforms LinkedIn? into a lot of. <gasps> yeah. So what LinkedIn, LinkedIn, right? So yeah. I I actually have been praising LinkedIn as the place to go. Really? Um, it, it is well, though. Like it is. It feels, it I, I actually for look at LinkedIn is, for some people. Yeah. Well, oh, well the nice thing about it's just, we're streaming there right now. <laughs> and then, the nice thing about LinkedIn is you. that <laughs> you, it's there's not a lot. It's not about fighting. It's not about posting pictures of your animals and, and personal stuff. It's professional. And so yeah. uh, w- you keep it professional and you kind of know what to expect. So I actually see LinkedIn as being a really good place to go if you don't want to just doom scroll or, you know, look at dumb memes. But the, you're just going to go there. your like customers be the ones who are doom scrolling though and be like, Ooh, I want to buy cool art. You know, I mean, yeah, I'm kind of in that same boat where like, okay, I'm fine shutting off social media when I don't need it. But now when I want to see someone to see my link or my new paper that I published or this job ad that I have, well, now I don't have anybody following me anymore and I don't Mm, have that presence to share. I mean, that that's kind of, that's that's kind of the double edge nature of, of and it's like, we need a new platform, but we also don't need any more new platforms. I feel like (laughs) that's why LinkedIn has not for everybody, but for, for, for for some folks has been like this is the the better this, place for me because so the, you know I'm saying here's what I'm good at mm-hmm. here's how I would like to collab with you yeah. potentially mm-hmm. right. and you know let's talk about that and keep it simple well I mean the thing the great thing about LinkedIn is of course it's focused on business and your professional you know side of your life and it's interesting because like DV, you know there's a lot of places that sort of foster that same sort of same sort of genre mentality right deviant art used to be where you went mm. uh, until within the past year and a half uh used to go where you like hey i did art let me show other people who are of a similar mindset <laughs> now it's they like want. uh we all do it <laughs> well now it's all like 80 percent like yeah. generative ai art right, uh right. but um it's 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 you know it's you definitely i'm wondering if that's the future where it's just hey this is the platform where i talk sports this is a platform where i talk about my hobby fly fishing this you know you, mm. instead of just having to everyone reddit it's just reddit yeah, maybe that's almost almost like a subreddit you have yeah. your different subreddits that you visit maybe that's yeah. discord possibly yeah. that's discord or but reddit. that's too um closed <laughs> off well and yeah. also you know the the whole idea of the super app right it's like okay yeah, we got wechat in china it. i mean you know yeah. locked in that's what everybody uses for everything we don't have a at least in the u.s you know where i live we don't have that um, we have uh, apps that are trying to make that happen, but also I, I just don't think that everybody wants to be in the same place all the time to talk no. about all the things and do yeah. all the things. And maybe if we stretch this even further, we can link it to our lack of third spaces. I don't know if I'm going too philosophical, mm-hmm. but in the U.S. we don't have a lot of third spaces. Yeah. And having spaces where we can, like you were saying, only our hobby is in this area, let's say a forum or a subreddit. It feels at least a little bit more refreshing than I have my job apps on here. I have my family on here. I have whatever else is Everything. going on. Yeah. And I can just be anonymous and be with the fly fishing people. Or That's why Park Run is, is caught on. Have you all heard about Park Run? No. Mm-hmm. What's that? It's, Park Run. it's like 22 countries, hundreds of cities. People just get together and literally run through the park on a Saturday morning. But you're like, what? <laughs> like, you think, why would but, do that? But people love it. I would do that. Even yeah, though right. it's like the most, like, well, yeah, why sure, you could do you that. Why would you love that? Why like, is you nobody could, anonymous? Brought me to be a park run person. Go, go to park run. They don't, you could start one in LA. Because you could, anybody yeah, can do I mean, it. Really and it's, it's exactly what you're talking about, Nikki. It's third space. It's like, yeah. Yeah. do you, if, if you're like, unable to run they they've got walks if you're unable to walk they've got accessibility it's, exercises like nice. they're they're just trying well, to get people together to to, to hang out it's I, not you know i want this really app for bird watching i feel this like would this is so good <laughs> this bird also i mean yeah. the the whole sort of like running a marathon you know it's like we can't all you know run 26.6 miles <laughs> Oh my god! Don't want to kind of thing, be, but like there is a whole sort of like maybe you do a half. Oh marathon. wow! Look at that. Well, I mean, you walk beat is, it. It's, beat it's is the on, same idea. Beat is on his way home from a park run right now. There you go. Kick up what that a, VO two max, man. Yeah. Where are we doing? <laughs> 
That's cool. That's pretty cool. I mean, you know, and that's yeah. that's the whole thing. A lot of these are, are cultivated around the idea of a community. Yeah. Instead of like directly the activity like you got to yeah. be able to not not only do a marathon you got to do a triathlon yeah right? you got to be like able to levels. You know, yeah do I, I mean i don't i don't i mean probably obviously you know when someone wins the marathon in new york they're you know happy about it but like it's more of just like I'm gonna do this. It's gonna be hard, you know. My family is it's, gonna be on the side, you know, with a sign, you know, cheering me on. It's it it's it's adorable. I I it's, I don't it's, I don't it's think less, that's bad at all. It's less marathon and more beta breakers. You know where it's, it's well no, beta no. breakers is a whole, <laughs> that's a whole other, other thing. thing. Yes. and no one knows what that is outside I, of San Francisco. I, yeah, I have yeah. no <laughs> idea what that is. Uh, Roger, would you like to tell us what beta breakers is like? I don't think we have time for that. We need okay. to get to. Me- <laughs> All right. <laughs> it involves nude people. Oh, uh, there is more going on. If that's the only thing you focus on, you're totally misunderstanding. Beta Beta. Um, uh, we will. Now we we'll, know. We'll possibly get Roger back does. to this. Um, but Nikki, yes, we 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 know that um, you recently uh, went to the neuroscience uh, society for neurosciences annual conference um yeah. which was in chicago and mm-hmm. um it brought back a lot of knowledge so let's talk about that yeah and um i i went kind of informally i was going for my research anyway going talking about goat brains and you know i chatted with tom i was like hey this is a big deal in my field do you want some clips and that's kind of what we put together potentially next time i go to a conference i can be more press like we'll see but um there's a lot of tech. So you've got if you've been to a big conference, whether it's scientific or like I was saying, CES, you know, there's like the floor with all the people with have that have expos. And then I don't really know how CES is like, but you've got people probably giving talks. I don't know if you guys have posters, but we also have posters, for example. Hmm. Uh, my student was giving a poster. Yeah, depends on. And um, mm-hmm. so I walked around some of the booths. I looked at some of the more techy things. Some of them wouldn't let me talk to them because <laughs> it was too fancy. Uh, but there was a robot microscope, which I really liked. I think we've got a picture in here somewhere of that. And um, so I talked to two booth people, with, which were very different and no real preference for either of them other than the booths look techy. So I just walked up to them. And then I chatted with a few colleagues who use tech in their neuroscience. I, I, I guess you could say everybody who does neuroscience nowadays uses some form of tech. So it's pretty easy to just grab someone and, and ask them. So, um, yeah, we'll just run some clips and, and chat about it, I think. The first one I did is maybe my favorite. It's a booth called Backyard Brains. Um, and you'll hear about them. And they basically are trying to make neuroscience accessible to kids in school but i kind of want to buy one of their kits because they're awesome so you use uh, tech and neuro yeah so we are doing a computational neuroscience tool for students high school students to use in classroom the robot communicates with an app that can run on uh, laptops and uh, tablets and phones Mm -hmm. and so students can go in and change different uh, properties within the brains they have different neurons and synapses different types of neurons uh, different stimuli you drag neurons into this workspace uh, and then connect it to the robots uh, motors and sensors and then depending on what kind of network you've created for the robot it's going to behave in different ways um, this particular robot is trying to see something if it sees something red it's going to start spinning so it'll oh yeah it'll turn red and, and this is 3d printed yes, yes. very cool um, and so there are different principles of neuroscience in here that students actually use so recurrent excitation lateral inhibition between circuits that kind of thing um, and uh, we've actually found that students really enjoy this at the moment I, I would imagine it looks yeah. awesome yeah. what's the overall goal for backyard brains so we want to make neuroscience part of secondary education we want there to be standards in neuroscience and we want there to be experiments available for students to learn hands-on uh, in the classroom and so all of our products are basically the same kind of neuroscience research tools that you find here but made easy yeah. uh, for students and made made affordable and also providing a curriculum around that and if someone was just interested and wanted to get a robot at home they can also buy these yes absolutely <laughs> we sell to amateurs we sell to universities awesome. uh, uh, even if so my name is christopher harris back your brains back your brains.com brains. all right you can find us there yeah thank you thank you how do you use tech and neuro yeah 
<laughs> Oops, started over again. Uh, that's cool. So backyard robots, basically. <laughs> yeah, and and I really want to buy myself one of these, honestly. And I um, I had some pics of the booth. It was basically one of the booths that made you want to come up and mess with it. It was just a bunch of wires, a bunch of robots, people plugging stuff in. They had an iPad. Where he was showing me at the time when I was chatting with him about like kind of changing. There we go. Very nice. Uh, connectivity in the brain. And it's just awesome. Uh, I, I love this booth. And I thought this is DTNS people are going to like this stuff. I know yeah. you guys are nerds. <laughs> no, definitely. That's like uh, maker kind of things. Yeah, the brain, yeah totally. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, every year they get more and better and better stuff in there. All right. What about the next one? Let's go. The next one is a different booth, completely different. Um, so from what I got, these guys had kind of like a VR type headset, but it acts kind of like an EEG. And uh, I'll just let them explain that to you. Our device is Exxon R. It is the neural hub, all-in-one neural hub for XR and neurotech-related research. Okay. And what we have is 16 channels. Eight, uh, we have six EEG channels. EEG channel is how I get my brain data. And we also have additional eight bipolar channels, which are for e, EXG, e, ECG, EOG, and these are... It'll be your heart rate or your muscle movement. Anything that happens within the body, you can measure with these bipolar signals. And with Exxon R, you can, this is a medical grade research product, and you can use it for research in from anything to diseases like Alzheimer's or ALS. We, we concentrate on ALS, and you can also do research on automating devices like moving a wheelchair so with how your does brain. It work for that. So what it does is, uh, you can see there are four targets in my screen. Mm -hmm. If I concentrate on one target, it helps me pick that target, just with brain signal, nothing else. It's not tracking my eye movement, it's not tracking anything, just with my brain signal, it's helping me make a decision. Mm -hmm. So what happens in diseases, uh, some diseases, is you cannot always have motor function. You cannot move your hands, you cannot move your legs, you cannot even move your eyes. But with this product, you can still make a decision just with your brain. For example, in ALS, in late stage ALS, you cannot move your eyes either. And but with this device, you can st late stage ALS people can still make a decision so on their own. So it translates that. Yes, it oh, translates the brain signals into actual words. Wow, that's crazy. It's cool, right? Right. Yeah. Th so there's all kinds of booths like this. Big. There was a whole two rows of booths with EEG caps. I don't know what happened with EEG this year, but they were Busted all over out, the place over. there. And so I got to watch her wear that. Um, and I'm not gonna. I'm not here to say whether like that's a good product or not. I don't use sure. that in my research. It looked really cool, and that's why I went up to them. But totally. you guys can kind of yeah. see how how we're using tech. The one of the taglines for this person was saying it's kind of like Neuralink, except you don't have to implant a chip into the brain, which <laughs> yeah. sounded which is pretty great. It's brain computer interface, just mm -hmm. external, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so and, you know, and uh, just. Just speaking of ALS, um, yeah. you know, um, I, I, I know somebody uh, whose father has it and, mm. you know, um, has increasingly had, you know, a hard time just, you know, going about life, yeah. right? And at this point, his tongue can help him type things. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. To, yeah. you know, to, to, to give, you know, his family and friends information and, you know, because his brain is still there. Yeah, it's, like it's, the it's brain just is the motor there. Uh, response that, yeah, that breaks down. But anything that makes that, you know, even slightly more possible, I am just so for. Yeah, and I, you know, I don't know where they're at with, with marketing to the public, but I would assume if they're at SFN, then they're probably trying to get this out to medical centers. And there's all kinds of attendees there. So hopefully um, this can be helpful for that. Um the next few people I interviewed are other professors who were there presenting their work. So I'll just let you, I'll let them tell you what, what they work on. I'm Liz McCullough. I'm at Oklahoma State University. Uh, we use tech a number of different ways. So we inject viruses in the brain and use it to explore different circuits to try to figure out which areas of the brain are connected to each other. In my teaching, I also use AI a lot to get my students to help them understand scientific papers, so using AI to kind of make a nice synthesis, but then have them critique the use of AI and if it does a good job at talking about science and uh, communicating it well. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So it's a good tool for them to understand the uses and limitations of AI. 
Okay, she yeah, brought so me I, around, but I was a little scared when she said injecting viruses into brains. <laughs> yeah, I think she works on flies. Or no, actually, she uh, works okay, on rodents. Okay. So yeah. um, that's a Different. actually pretty commonplace way of getting vectors into cells is by sure. using a virus. Um, um, yeah, Liz's work is really interesting. I, I got you an AI clip. So, you know, AI was pretty prevalent at the meeting. Our, uh, the first huh? presidential lecture was on whether AI has knowledge. Um, I will say I walked away with it uh, not having gained any knowledge. So I don't, I'm not sure if we ended up defining that or not. I see. Um, questions. Sorry, I feel like I interrupted you. No, no, I just said I okay. see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I <laughs> it was one of those like, what are we? What mm -hmm. is knowledge? And I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, um, sometimes, sometimes my question is like, why are humans and mice so similar to the point they're where- They're not. Uh, mice are just cheap. Got it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that is the way we're similar. And I'm saying that as a biased person because I work on goats and I'm saying goats are closer to humans than mice are. We should work more on goats. But um, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, mice are just a great animal that are small enough that they're great to work with. But arguably flies are way better for genetic work. And but I mean, mice also breed of, a lot. So. When you say, you know, you know, the, the subject of rodents, it's like, I mean, is it really just mice? Mice are the best. Have no, we, mice are just established. About... I, I'm okay. firmly in the, I think mice are bad category. I mean, mice are there and they're really useful for what they do because we have established protocols, but they're there because of that and not because, because they're particularly a, good. Sort of and they legacy. reproduce really quickly, they're just which easy. is important mm -hmm. if you want to breed them yeah. for like specific genetic lines and make clones and stuff. That's yeah. a lot harder with anything that breeds slower than a mouse. Like I, I can make goat clones, but it will take forever. And I want to do it. No elephant clones. You can't have that fourteen month gestation Super period. Super unethical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you're not wrong, Sarah. Um, I'll, I'll play the next clip. This is from actually a great friend of mine, Natalie, who works on naked mole rats. So let's let's roll this one. All right. So how do you use tech in your work? So in my work. I track animals using a computer software that can tell a mouse is darker than the white background and it can follow where that mouse goes and then I can look at the data afterwards and say any medical differences that that mouse might be having. Oh, so I'm Dr. Natalie von Kaiserling at Ponce Health Sciences University. I'm an assistant professor of physiology and anatomy and I use a bunch of naked mole rats. So even though that software is made for mice because naked mole rats are also darker than the background we use, it can trace them just fine. Wow. So this one's fun and also because tracking is something that's pretty prevalent in neuroscience right now. I use it for my goats. My colleagues use it for their flies. I've seen it done on zebrafish and um, mice, of course. And it's something that um, my goat one is, is I believe LLM based. It's called sleep. Um, and there's lots of different ways of doing it, but it's really helpful for like looking at behavioral changes or like posture tracking or changes in locomotion and things like this. And it's, it's becoming very, a lot easier to do instead of having grad students analyze the data, we get AI to like pick out patterns. It's a lot better. <laughs> uh, interesting. Okay. What yeah. else we got? We got one more or oh, two more. We've got uh, Todd who works on flies. I'm Todd Maury. I'm an assi uh, assistant professor at Rutgers University, and I use uh, 64 channel electrodes to record uh, neurons from awake behaving animals that are decision making. Electrodes record the neural activity as the animals are behaving, and we can implant them, and they can um, map on behavioral decisions that are made to neural activity. Uh, we, we see it on uh, oscilloscopes. Um, software to see uh, neural uh, activity profiles. So um, it's hard to get scientists to talk about their science in layman terms, which is why I had him break it down so many times in this in this clip. Um, this is kind of like EEG, but implant into the brains of the flies where you can just like watch the spike from the activation of the different neurons. So it's, it's I mean, internal. Yeah, this is internal. also, yeah. you know, I, yeah. speaking of layman's terms, like, how do you say like, okay, fly, you're going to go to sleep for a second. We're going to implant something. And oh, they're not asleep. <laughs> They don't have like anesthesiologists. So because they're invertebrates, there's like no rules. Count backward from So oh, they actually have right. this. Have you guys seen Hellraiser? Wait, when you, wait, wait. When you say there's I've, no I've rules, are you sure. saying there's so no. Invertebrates no don't have ethical um, oh, rules. Oh, got it. 
So that's why a lot of people work on flies. You don't have to go through things like but, I have to do. But, like but you don't have to put the fly to sleep in order to No, you can just stick something. things in their brains Got while it. they're alive okay. and awake. Yeah. And basically you have this like contraption where their their head is like mount glued to a stick and they've got like pins all in their head and like uh, they're from hellraiser yeah exactly like pin, it looks exactly like there we that go. and you can make them run on a little ball and like record what's happening or just like trigger different things that you want to record and you can watch the spikes in the neurons you can kind of only do this in invertebrates unless you uh, unless it's the 80s basically um <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah we've got one time more. travel so yeah yeah <laughs> we, they used to do it in cats but it's, it's we don't care about that thing. anymore they and monkeys. Really they used to monkeys. do it in monkeys. Yeah, we they did remember them. the monkeys. There are a lot of monkey movies in the 80s that kind of yeah, covered that topic. Yeah. Uh, we got one more fly researcher, and this one comes with videos. And this is my colleague, Atulia, who's also at UA, but who is also at SFN. My name is Atulia Eingar, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So how do you use uh, tech in your neuroscience research? So we're really excited in... Uh, we're really excited to monitor neuronal activity across the brain. And to do this, we use two sort of exciting um, technical approaches. The first is a technique known as two-photon confocal imaging or two-photon co confocal microscopy, um, where we had an infrared laser. And the reason why we use an infrared laser is it can punch through deeper and de deeper sort of layers in the brain. So the laser can punch through um, deeper layers of the brain and can um, and we can observe light as it's reflected or as it is emitted um, from those deeper layers. Um, and just to be clear, uh, what kind of brain are we are we looking at? Oh yeah, we use fruit fly brains. Um, the reason why they fit under the microscope, right? They, well they fit under the microscope, but they're also um, incredibly versatile. So if you want a genetically tractable model of your favorite disease, the fruit fly is the place to be. <laughs> um, and so these fruit flies, um, oftentimes we have them express fluorescent reporters in their brain that tell us or activate when these neurons are active, right? So uh, an example of this is a protein called GCAMP that fluoresces or emits green light. Um, when it's under, uh, when the neuron is, uh, when there are high calcium levels in the neuron, or the neuron's active, leading to high calcium levels, which leads to fluorescence. And so we use a technique known as two photon confocal microscopy, which excites our GCAMP sensor, allows us to see this fluorescence. And this technique uses an infrared laser. Uh, that pulses an inf uh, a long wavelength of light, which can punch through the brain. And as a result, uh, we can see deeper parts of the fly brain. Um, and, and notice when they're active. Notice in when the neurons, exactly. And notice when the neurons in this fly brain are active. And so with this technique, we can actually observe activity across the whole brain in single neuron resolution in uh, you know at a, a frame rate of something like three times a second, so we get a, a snapshot of what every single neuron in the brain is doing three times a second or something like. That. Yeah, so that is why flies are great. Is that we just as of last week have now the full fly connectome, meaning we know what all where all the neurons are in a fly brain and what they do to a certain extent, and what they're connected to at least. Um, that actually came out while I was at SFN. Next time I'll have a press pass to go report on that. But um, flies well, are pretty cool for that. They're, they're I mean, fruit flies. <laughs> I've always oh, thought of them as a nuisance in my kitchen. Now when you see um, them on your bananas, right? you'll know. We know they'll what the brain looks like. They're getting information that's you catch very it crucial and then you for the rest stick of electrodes us. In its yeah, brain. I always joke with my colleague because his office is next door. Every time like something goes bad in the trash, I'm like, your flies escaped your lab again. And he's like, we genotype them. They're not ours. They're wild. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Nikki, this was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with us and let folks know where they can keep up with the work that you do. Yeah, of course. I'm always findable at nicoleackermans.com uh, and uh, also my, my contacts on there, whatever my new projects are. I'm on socials with the same name. So go find me there. Excellent. 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 
Uh, and yeah, a, a compressed version of that will be in DTNS uh, on Monday as well. Mm-hmm. If you if you want to get uh, a second look, because there's some fascinating stuff. Oh my gosh, there's so, so many interesting things Hopefully going on at that conference. Accessible right? enough. Yeah. We got well, fruit flies. We got. I was gonna goats, say we got you know mats. sticking viruses I mean, into people on. in the brains. Yeah. A little BCI on the yeah. outside. There's good stuff. <laughs> we got some viri. Stuff, yeah, <laughs> if, that, if that's how you say it, uh, yeah, viruses. it's viruses, right? Viruses, yeah, viruses. But I kind of right. like viri. Uh, yeah, viri. me too. Yeah, uh, let's know. popularize like viri. viri. It's like, like a, a song store. somebody will sing. Viri. <laughs> eventually, you know, like thanks, viri. Uh, well. We are, as you, as we said before, experimenting. So let us know uh, what what you think, what what you like uh, about a more longer, laid back GDI live stream. Yeah. Uh, but we had to do a quiz, right? Yes, I'm excited. Like, I mean, Len's here. What, not do a quiz. Automatic quiz. I gotta do the quiz. Len's always the best at this. That's why he likes the quiz so much. <laughs> Should we like, shake I, it up? Though? All right. Yeah, let's shake it up a little bit. Sarah, what if you hosted? Ooh. What if you asked the questions? Uh, am I supposed to? I don't know. I just <laughs> Is came it because up with the you idea. think I'm going to get everything wrong otherwise? No, it's, it's because you always, you it's always say crazy. like it's unfair <laughs> that I'm doing all the questions. So. Well, no, it's unfair because Len's just so good at that. No. All right, so you're going to beat Len this time is what you're okay. saying. All right, yep. Yep. All right, all right. Let's do this, it. These these uh, quiz should be called Beat Len. These are these quizzes real should historical be figures of Can genius. Can you beat Len? Roger is yeah. trying to trick us. <laughs> are you That's smarter wait, than I'm not Len. tricking anyone. I am are you smarter you're than You're trying a to Len. trick us, though, Roger, <laughs> and we all know it. Yeah. I am merely <laughs> exciting the portions of the your uh, of your pre-existing uh, tendencies. Brain. Conditions. <laughs> You're you're shooting a metaphysical, metaphorical laser at our brain. These are all questions about geniuses, right, Roger? Yes. Ooh. Geniuses that have left their mark on the story of human history. Wow. But they also had some pretty wild and crazy quirks. Mm. Can you figure <laughs> the, what ge- the geniuses did. Yes. Real they, they historical were, you know, figures well, well, that's of why genius. they're geniuses, right? It's like, you're weird, but you're really smart. Yeah. We I start. Know. I, I know a few people like that. I've with Pythagoras. Opinion. Oh, God. The, the answer is Pythagoras. No, um, Pythagoras is famous for developing the Pythagorean theorem, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. The, the right, right triangles right. thing. Um, he's slightly well known, slightly less well known for his odd distrust of this vegetarian food ingredient. <laughs> what? <laughs> is it broccoli? I'm. <laughs> I don't I mean, know why I was Nikki says broccoli because that, that. Nikki w- says broccoli. W- Wait, that would have been my guess as well. Was broccoli in ancient like, Greece? Brassica. I would say yes. Of of can't be tomatoes because they didn't exist in ancient Greece because that's from mm. North and Southern America. We have America. we have one broccoli. Len, How about Sarah? I'm going to say carrots. Carrots. Mm. We have carrots. I'm going to say spinach. Mm. Spinachio. Mm. That's good. The answer is. Fava beans. Oh, fava beans. <laughs> wow. <laughs> See, he had seen Why did he like Silence of the Lambs. You know, he, <laughs> what he, he distrust Why? a good fava he, bean? Come yeah. He, What's, what, he, what he, he had a very like peculiar sense of spirituality, but oh, he also he had he he kind of it kind of say. parlayed into a sense of living. And so he felt that fava beans um well, first of all, they're beans, so they give you gas. And he believed that if you were oh, expelling please. gas, a fava bean you were, is not you, you were taking you away toot. your breath of life. Like you had so ah. many breaths that you had oh in God. your life. <laughs> and by expelling... But he extra... must have believed that about all beans, not just fava beans. <laughs> why why do you pick on but, fava but, but beans? Fava Maybe they didn't know other pati- beans at the time. No, no, Maybe he didn't in particular, understand. fava beans, also because of their shape, he felt that they mm. contained the souls of deceased people. Oh. And so oh. if you were eating yeah. the beans... You were, in fact, engaging Pythagoras. in a form of cannibalism. Stealing from the chat, is it because they pair well with a nice chi- Chianti? <laughs> Chianti. Yeah. He, um, well, maybe he didn't understand. We, we were, we were going to get that joke eventually. Listen, yes. I mean, 
Yeah. You, could, you know, yeah. they had some interesting theories back in the day. I always start my neuro class by saying that Aristotle thought that all of the sensations were in the heart and the brain was just like a radiator for blood. It took them mm. a while to I mean, to the Egyptians, when they mummified you, they took Kinda away the like uh, unimportant part, which was the brain. They took it out yeah. of your nose. Yeah, nobody nose. needs that. Yeah, but yeah. they yeah. stored all the other organs in jars. Well, those they are important. Yeah. The brain. They thought yeah. that all everything was happening in the heart. Turns yeah. out it's just a pump. <laughs> Boring. The heart wants well, what it wants. But Blood. what <laughs> happens when you don't have a brain anymore? You're Nothing. dead. You're Does it matter? matter? <laughs> nah, I don't know. I, I don't know if you're dead. But some people do just fine. But yeah, hmm. it's a it's um lobotomy. <laughs> and right? here we are on this show. <laughs> no, lobotomy uh, is when you separate the podcasts? two hemispheres of your brain. All right. Question ah, number okay. two. Sir Isaac Newton is known for developing the laws of motion and calculus, but he was also a dabbler in the occult. Mm. Documents obtained at auction in 1939 showed that he tried to acquire this well-known alchemical substance that was purported to be able to turn base metals like lead into precious ones mm. like gold mm. and silver. Is it? It's Wait, is it an is Harry apple? Potter? I'm thinking. Its, is it's it, name is was also Stone. the uh, UK uh, Harry Potter <laughs> it's novel. It's the Philosopher's the, Stone, right? Philosopher's Stone. You're saying Philosopher's Stone. That seems obvious, <laughs> Sarah. But that's the Harry Potter answer. I don't know when? if that's real. Um, Couldn't even. No. I don't even. I'm not. I, even I'm sure. just like. It's an apple. Help. <laughs> but apple. I, we have it's, apple. It's the alchemy thing about turning things into gold. Philosopher's Stone, apple, Len. What's your answer? Um, I I don't know. Yeah, um, uh, that is incorrect. Well, you, you, you do better, know. You better know something. Because Nikki told you it's the philosopher. The philosopher. Oh, yeah, that's what I wow. get for reading Harry Potter way too much when I was a kid. Wow. Yep. I said that. Uh, yeah. It is one of, it was the, I don't know if you can say this, the holy grail of alchemy because it was. They're probably the same thing. It was the tincture. It was the, it was the catalyst for how all the other alchemy. It was alchemy stuff was supposed to, be, to work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you, you guys can have read the, the Philosopher's Stone, you can do anything. But when when the publishers for Harry Potter, you know, brought the title to North America, they figured Americans wouldn't know what the Philosopher's <laughs> right. Stones was, so they changed it to the Sorcerer's Stone. Hmm. Oh, the Sorcerer's Stone. Huh. Okay, gotcha. But wow. like Americans hmm. don't like philosophy. The one European <laughs> yeah, yeah. and the two Americans on our panel bear that out. <laughs> <laughs> don't under, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe they made the right decision is what I'm saying. I think um, I read quite... Harry Potter while I was still American, though. Oh, yeah? Wait, but you just <laughs> know what Philosopher's American? Stone is. Yeah, because I moved to Europe when I was 10, and I read it before uh, then. Okay. Uh, question number three. Pablo Picasso carried uh, this yeah. around with him to use when he found people to be rude or annoying, especially <laughs> those asking about his art or insulted fellow artist Paul Cezanne. I know this. I know, I know I this. this. I know this. Okay. It was a gun. Yeah. A gun? gun? I was going to say a flask. No. Flask? A gun? Gun? It was a gun. The answer is a Browning revolver filled Yang. with blanks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> gun would, is correct, Sarah. He would shoot at people. Yeah. <laughs> but he'd shoot blanks. He would shoot yeah. blanks. But yeah. You know, yeah. I'm not hilarious. really shooting you. I'm just, you know, pointing a gun at your face. I'm just giving you a heart attack. With the I, love this. I love that, though. That's so funny. No, no, this is the thing. He would have admirers <laughs> come up to that, him. Do you love that, Len? I'm like, I'm let's like, not do that. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, Len, think about it this way. Joke. Len has a, they won't let you has, the has a big fan of his artwork, <laughs> and that person comes up to Len. It's like, Len, Len. You know what? What was what was your process to create that artwork for like GDI? Bang, you know, like bam. no, boom. <laughs> away Should from have me. Tweeted at me oh, instead so of coming funny. up to me in person. You know, I know that because I I um that's my it's son a, is an artist. He's a painter. Oh. And um and I my son I, I carries said, hey. a gun. I said <laughs> my son is my, Pablo Picasso. You should you should try this if somebody comes up to you and asks you a question. So I sent him that. Yeah. Uh, Sarah that. was on it though. Sarah knew it right away. That yeah. was yeah. that was that was well, good. Well, London too. London See, too. Sarah, and, you're you're smart too. No, but Sarah's better than London. Thank you, Len. <laughs> I am smart. S M R T. You've got a little brain. It's good. <laughs> um. It, yours should not be hollowed out when the Egyptians turn you into a woman. That's yeah, right. You should keep it in a jar. Yeah. Yeah. See, for study. We keep can study it. Somewhere. It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in 2009, this noted astrophysicist hosted a party for time travelers at the University of Cambridge. The physicist arranged for balloons, champagne, and nibbles for the guests, 
but did not send out the invites until the following day after the party was over. So did anyone come to the party? Was this a mistake or on purpose? Was it? No, it was on purpose. He was like, if you're a time traveler, then oh, you'll be I able see. to get the invitation in the future and he come was back in time sort of ha -ha to the it. party. I feel like yeah. Hawking would have that kind of humor. He was a he was a jokester. Nikki says Stephen Hawking. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say Stephen Hawking. That sounds. Yeah. That one's going to join the Hawking parade. I'm I'm Hawking as well. We're going Hawking, and the answer is correct for all three. Yay. Stephen Hawking, He's a jokester. He was hoping that in a thousand years' time, someone Why could nibbles. <laughs> I mean, but look, but like, if you're, if you're smart enough to do this, you still didn't have a good party because no one came. He probably didn't want anyone to show up. Yeah, that's it was smart. A, it was a, it's a big joke. It, it was. It was him. a big joke. He's a yeah. joke. I've heard. I've heard some things I like, about. People I like that who we're are, all focusing on how good a time <laughs> Stephen Hawking had when he was like, "This is my best <laughs> idea I had all year." <laughs> this is pretty funny. Guys. I'm like, like oh, did anyone so come to his party though? <laughs> but some people don't want people to come to was parties. Was there tomatoes? Party. Yeah. Yeah. The plans get canceled. Won. I'm like, oh no. By no one coming to his party, he won because he's like, see, time travel yeah. is impossible. But also, I didn't have to talk to people. Yay. <laughs> but yeah. nobody yeah. came to any of the his other parties. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> That's <laughs> the like, problem. Oh, you think it was just cover? They, they, they just were don't all like time traveler parties. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, people were like, uh, oh, you burned me once, Steven. It ain't happening again. <laughs> All right. Roger, did you use the word nibbles or did you pull that from somewhere? I'm just kidding. Uh, from I the Wikipedia. pulled it. I, I pulled left it, it in okay. there because I figured nibbles. it would at least so give away the fact <laughs> that it was him. That was my nickname in high school. Nibbles, nibbles Peralta. Really? <laughs> Nib nibbles Peralta. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, pitching. It's a B with a B. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Cleveland Guardians. Oh, I can see Nibbles Peralta. No, with a B. Yeah. Watson, okay. Waltzing around with a revolver filled with blank. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nibbles, yeah. I got a question for you. There, there, it's only blanks, you guys. It's not a real gun. I mean, Seriously, blanks can be dangerous if you're close It's not harming anyone. anyone. No one you got can hurt. still like puncture an eardrum, surely. But you could yeah. kill yourself. There's that really? pastor yeah. who oh, sure. had All right. A, All right. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Kids, don't play with blanks. Don't yeah, play please. with weapons at all. This is a DTNS PSA. Don't play. <laughs> no uh, weapons. Let's talk about th yeah. the Spanish surrealist uh, who wasn't above Daddy. using their fame to get out of paying for hefty restaurant bills. To avoid paying, he would write out a check, then scribble a drawing on its back. Few people would pass up the chance to own his art, Come so on. more often than not, he would not cash the checks. I know this one. I know this one. Is it Salvador Dali? It's, it's, it's Salvador Dali. Dali. Yeah. He was a Salvador cheap, cheap state. He was also like always in debt. Correct. That's well, pretty when awesome. When you say though. Spanish surrealist, I'm like, yeah, it's but, Dali. Yeah, right. I'm Picasso. It's, I was trying to make sure these weren't too yeah. obtuse. No, Rogers, you know, Rogers doing a good job of giving you also, some Also, in that picture, that's, that's an ocelot, and he really shouldn't be hanging out with those. He also had a pet anteater. Weird dude. You know, I was going to say the opposite. That, I was gonna, that ocelot should know a it's hanging out with Salvador Dali. And that's <laughs> it's <laughs> also a problem. You know, this is like a kind dream of, a of mine to be as famous as Dali to be able to draw something on the back of a check and people won't cash the check <laughs> you should you know, do that when you're sitting in the owner's box where all the food is already paid for so the other artist that I just I be know, like, you know what you might not want to cash that. So, nobody so robert, uses checks anymore. sir that's not a check robert crumb uh who is a cartoonist oh, yeah. uh he bought uh all kinds of um uh land uh, but in you know in in France by just giving the person some sketchbooks, yeah. And I'm yeah. like, that is the way to go, my yeah. friend. But these I people tried that were at this house and they didn't accept it. People, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Albert Einstein. Anybody heard of him? Uh, no. Swiss guy. Swiss guy. Weird hair. Uh, relativity. <laughs> Uh, if okay. you've heard of that, yeah, sounds familiar. Sounds space familiar. time. Yeah. Uh, throughout his career, Einstein had a constant companion with him that carried from place to place he called Lena. What was Lena? A dog. His wife. Sarah His says wife. a dog. <laughs> a duck. R Glenn says a duck. A Is teddy bear. A teddy bear. Because <laughs> he uh, was pretty weird. You're all... Wrong. Oh, wrong. Uh, was, it? was in fact a violin. 
Oh, uh, life okay. without playing music is inconceivable for me. I live my daydreams in music. I see my life in terms of music. I get most joy in life out of music. Okay. I actually totally relate I with get, that. I, I get that. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. I get that. Lena is sh a shorthand for him for violin. Violina. For violin. Yeah. 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 All right, Lena. Nice. That's, cool. that's I didn't like, know that. Like, that's a good like, one. Like, imagine your security blanket being a violin. You're just like, I need, cuddly. I need it <laughs> yeah. with me. It doesn't than, matter if it's cuddly. It just makes me feel better. At least for the people. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's keep it physics. Uh, Richard Feynman helped push forward quantum mechanics, quantum electrodynamics, but in his spare time indulged in a hobby that would normally be the preserve of bank robbers. What was the hobby? Uh, check kiting. Check kiting. Uh, a la Dolly. Stealing uh, money. Len. Stealing money is a preserve of bank robbers. You're right. Skiing? Is that the answer? Skiing? Skiing oh, oh, is I the saw, preserve of bank of robbers? Because ski masks? I don't know where it's going <laughs> with that. Oh, I we saw the answer skiing, in the chat. I like that. Stealing money and kiting checks. And the answer was safe cracking. Yeah. Oh. Safe, safe cracking. That makes sense. So it wasn't just lock picking, it was also like he had an he had a very invested interest in figuring out how to open locks. That makes sense. Like with the kind of mind person. he had. Yeah. Well, and even with that kind of mind today, it's like a safe, a modern safe. You're not gonna crack that safe. That's a challenge. I once taught myself how to Maybe. break into a hotel room with a YouTube video and it was surprisingly Ooh. easy. So you just played the YouTube video you could get in? <laughs> and the resonance <laughs> unlocked. I locked my key, me and my they roommate like, both locked our keys room? inside and we you got You lock them to the doors. front desk with the video playing in a big tablet and they think you're <laughs> Literally the, a else. credit card and a bobby pin Hello, and Mr. it took Feynman. us like 10 minutes and wow. it was kind of disturbing. And I'm not yeah. good at lock pick. I've never lock picked before, but it was pretty easy. <laughs> That's wow. why they switched to the to the scan, right? Like they, Yeah, I mean this was like a crappy you. hotel. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, our last question. Serbian-American inventor Nikola Tesla created the first AC motor, alternating current, mm -hmm. uh, Tesla coil, and designed a hydroelectric plant among his many accomplishments. But he had a strange phobia of these mollusk-derived jewelry items. Come on. What? Pearls. Mollusk derived Pearls. jewelry oh, Pearls. That's was a good Nikola answer. Tesla afraid of. Afraid of pearls? Yes, he was afraid of pearls. Pearls? Pearls? What? We have two for I pearls. I mean, octopus, Sarah? but that's not a jewelry. Uh, yeah. We have I one mean, for I octopus. Don't know what it would be <laughs> what it would be besides a pearl. I guess it that's has a lovely pearl, string of I octopus. Never, I, I could say a scallop. <laughs> octopus shaped. I'll, I'll go with scallops. <laughs> no. scallops. Oh, 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 we oh. could say mother of pearl because that what way I don't have gorgeous, the same exact answer. What a gorgeous scallop you're wearing. Uh, the answer is pearls. <laughs> Yay. The answer, yeah. Why? <laughs> Len knew. See? He knows. Knows. I know. <laughs> He was a weird guy too. He was in yeah. love with a pigeon. I'm surprised you didn't use that. <laughs> I as you were the, talking about he, the, what? Everybody does everyone that with had person. everyone had their ideas of why he was afraid of pearls, but he was just like he wouldn't even talk it's to probably psychosomatic to to his uh, to his assistant Psycho. if she was hmm. wearing pearls. Hmm. It was like, like he did you guys not know like about the pigeon, right? He had a no. pet pigeon who he like unofficially married or something. I mean, oh. I I love the idea of like. If you're wearing pearls, you have to go home for the day. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Instead of just being like, hey, I have a problem with ah. pearls. Please don't what wear them. What if, them. like, I should start doing that? Like, oh, I just can't. Meanwhile, I just want an excuse to go home. Like, yeah, I, I yeah. should start being a bit of a, more of a crazy <laughs> I'm sorry scientist. I wore pearls again. Oh, I guess I just you. must return to my abode. Yeah. I'm going to do that now. <laughs> I guess I'll have to go home and get my string of scallops. <laughs> it's <time. laughs> I guess he did not like the uh, well, every, grand old opera. Everybody said pearls already. I know you were just trying to keep it. What other scallop-derived jewelry is there? I mean, I mean, mollusk oysters. Derived. Well, yeah. Oyster, yeah. Oyster I mean, shell. Oyster earrings. jewelry. I mean, yeah, <laughs> oyster shells exists. are used in jewelry. It's, it's rarely, mother of pearl, but, yeah. which is really yeah. 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 abalone. 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 Shrimp. That would have yeah, been but that's mother of pearl too. That's also it's also it's also very delicious. It's so Ooh, I like abalone. I love abalone. <laughs> yeah. 
Scal- uh, I, li- I kind of like scallops, except they're a little rubbery. I never had them. Well, they shouldn't rubbery. be rubbery. You're, you're probably eating fake scallops. Yeah. Oh. They should, they should just... What are really they made of if they're it. fake? Sometimes they cookie-cutter punch through fish or skates. Yeah, like oh, skates. I thought you. I thought they were like they made of the Play-Doh. That. That they just oh, oh, sort of yeah, like yeah. the fake sushi stuff where it's like... Yeah. yeah. Oh, like surimi for we the We told crab. you or it was just, Rooney, just chopped up pollock. You can tell if they're like the same size and if the muscle fibers are straight up and down. Mm. Instead of side to side, <laughs> or uh, I love a good scallop. Yeah, people do overcook Getting them ripped too. off. I man. love a good scallop. Yeah. Well, that was excellent. Too. Thank you for playing the game. Uh, we only have a few more minutes of the Super Size Experimental Good Day Internet. Uh, one of the things Roger wanted to b- run by folks watching, uh, whether you're watching live or, or later, is what if we ran the top five inside of GDI? So mm. let's do that now. This week, I Is count- your life going too well? Here are the top five times tech almost started World War III. Number five, October 1960. Radar in Greenland mistook a moonrise over Norway as a Soviet missile launch. Except Khrushchev was in New York City, so probably not. Number four, November 1961. Strategic Air Command thought it was under attack when it lost communication with multiple sites. The failure was a faulty relay station. Number three, November 1979. A war training scenario mistakenly loaded onto a NORAD computer nearly triggered a nuclear response. It was halted after confirmation false alarm. Number two, June 1980, a faulty chip in an early warning system gave false indications of a Soviet attack. Alerts were suspended when warning systems showed no further signs of an attack, and this happened twice. And number one, September 1983, Soviet officer Stanislav Petrov ignored a warning that the U.S. had launched a nuclear missile, suspecting that was a malfunction, right? He was right. Thank goodness. Mm. <laughs> I learned a lot. Now. Yeah. In a short amount of time. Don't you miss the Cold War? No. I it really was, do. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was so back. fun where we yeah. were just sort of like uh, US Cold. versus yeah. Russia. Now it's you so get up much in the more morning complicated. And go, Ooh, I lived. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because growing up, there were so many polis- political policies that I didn't get, but I thought was cool, like the whole Star Wars program. Uh, that I really didn't dawn on me is until that I got older. That was a movie, older. not a program. <laughs> well, no, well, George Lucas was trying to sue the government <laughs> at that point for taking the name. Uh, but how much of the technology that was invested sort of eventually ended up, like, for example, the internet, right? We we have a, a lot of these were planned around uh, a, a particular uh, a, a particular threat scenario. Yeah. Also, Plus, my yeah. school was also a halfway bomb bug. Uh, uh, a bomb shelter. Mm-hmm. Um, re- oh, really? Like my, yeah. And also SF State, part of it was built underground for that reason. Our post office in Greenland. Maybe that's why half of shelter. my classes were underground. I was always like, why are we underground? It's not because they were mole men. It's because they were afraid of a nuclear attack. Well, um, they, speaks, it was both. Speaking <laughs> of Francis Ford Coppola, has anyone seen his newest movie? Oh, no. my, Megalopolis? Un- my son saw it, and he. I wrote. have not seen it. I um, have. Title? I have heard that it is. It is. It's it bad is. to the point that it's like the room. The it's clips bad. are hilarious. Is yeah. it? Is it bad as in unwatchable, and you can only watch the little clips? I think no. I think, I think so. it's watchable. I it just sort of like, oh my gosh, how did this get made? Yeah. Oh, and the answer is Francis Ford Coppola. <laughs> right. The the room is more befuddling because you're like, how did Tommy Wiseau get that well, made? Everyone everyone knows how Coppola got this made. Well, the thing Coppola. about it, yeah, it's like. Yeah the room is that now Coppola is saying that it's a, a comedy, much like Tommy Wiseau mm. did. Oh, because yeah, man, it's meant it. to be weird. I yeah. promise. Yeah. So, but, but like, there's a difference between being weird and being funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if yeah, you're weird, weird for weird sake and it's not funny, you're just like, what is this? But when people start laughing at it, you could just lean into it because otherwise, because oh, okay. then you lean into it. Yeah. Nick with yeah. a C, unpopular opinion. The room isn't that mad of a phone. Oh, I dude, don't think I've seen dude, the room. I don't know if I should. Uh, I've I only, would, I've only seen the, what's the one that was the movie about the room? The was Zelda that was one with uh, Frank the Disaster Zelda. artist. Yeah. yeah. I liked that true. movie. Yeah, I thought I thought it was I, I thought it was a good movie. Um, but I've never seen the original room. Oh my god, the room is. Seen. I mean, it's a San Francisco original. I know. It's so I bad. Know, I know. I so, just haven't seen it. At one point like during Megalopolis, and I did not see the film, but my son did. He said that Adam Driver can stop time. He does it once, but then 
he doesn't do it again. <laughs> you mean like personality or yeah. in the movie? He just no. Uh, he just uh, he has like a special power, and he's just like I don't care anymore. Yeah, and he doesn't use, use it that ever anymore. again. It has no yeah. bearing with the plot. It's just. I heard mm. that it was based on the Roman Empire and how you've got. Oh my Romans gosh! And is it like what is up with people Caesar. in the Roman Empire? What my is God. it based on? I mean, I mean, I mean we, it's not like we did a top five on, skirts. On, on the Roman Empire. Text. We did. We did indeed. No, I mean, I have friends who unironically say to me every day, I think about the Roman Empire. That's the meme. Like now it's just I think they're, it's they're they part of the meme. But the how other the meme empires. got started. But, I, but like they're not trying knows? to be like, oh, I'm part of a meme. It's like, no, I really no. think about that. They want to go back to a time Every where. day of your life. Because like yeah. there's the Inca, the Maya, the Ottoman Empire. They could think about other empires. Ottoman, they're just the not Mongol doing Empire. the research. There's uh, the uh, Northern British Yen. Empire, the French, the <laughs> Dutch. Yeah. The French. They're, they're not expanding their horizons. The Belgian. <laughs> the, uh, the Han Dynasty. Han the, Dynasty. This Dynasty. always reminds me of the Seinfeld Austro -Hungarian episode Empire. when, um, um, yeah. I don't know, George says Although to Although Austro-Hungarian, um, isn't that sort of an the Mogul of the, Dynasty. the Holy yeah. Roman Empire? Like, no? like kind of. the Netherlands and Holland. Isn't everything. And they yes, were like, I, can, I don't know. I can tell you the difference the because I'm Dutch. Who are the Dutch? <laughs> and they're like, I don't know. I can tell you. Holland is a region me. within the Netherlands. And the Dutch oh, are, okay. because English people misconstrued Germans, which call themselves Deutsch, mm. and Dutch people, which are really? from the Netherlands. Yeah, because yeah. we don't know how to speak foreign languages. Hmm. So do yeah. they over there, do they have a Holland Globetrotters? No. Roger. It's time for the mailbag. <laughs> uh, we need to make sure that we read Javon's email, right, Sarah? We do. We do. Um, uh, Javon writes in, greetings to the team. Here in Jamaica, the two telecoms we have gives us options with two caps, that data cap and the duration cap. For example, 30 days with 1.1 gigabyte or 28 days with 15 gigabytes. We buy a plan based on our usage. There's also two days, five days, et cetera. But the unused data rolls over upon renewal within 24 hours of expiration for some plans. That's on mobile. For landline, they don't focus so much on a data cap, but a speed cap, meaning 100 megabits per second plan is 100 down and 50 up. Blessings from Jamaica, says Javon. Thank you for the information every day. And? It sounds complicated. And What's in parentheses? J Javon uh, says this will be the third time that Sarah shares my feedback. <laughs> <laughs> so you know we're kind of we're kind of you know we're it's a we're, three we're, peak. We're, we're simpatico. Yeah. Yeah. Three. You indeed. Know? Three peak. Uh, and then real quickly, uh, AJ on Patreon wanted to point out that in Security Now recently, Steve Gibson went into uh, the tech behind the ability to show logos and stuff. We were talking about the Apple business stuff on DTNS earlier this week. So check out the latest Security Now if you want to know, or or a Security Now. I don't know if it was the, no, he says the most recent, most recent Security Now if you want to know how that Apple business logo planting and stuff works all right uh thank you for being part of the supersize experimental gdi everyone uh len peralta have you been illustrating today's episode by chance well you know what i have funny you should ask uh i really loved uh everything that nikki was talking about regarding the society of uh, neuroscience uh the snf annual conference uh, of course, me being not a neuroscientist or very scientific just in general, this is what I think that um, all neuroscientists <laughs> look like and what that conference looked like. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. It's, Please uh, tag them when you post brains. It. It's Yeah, you know, uh, I took place in Chicago, right? So, like, uh, Chicago turned their giant uh, location into a giant brain and then the huge <laughs> the location. Yeah. The location turned you know, the brain. the Chicago place. Yeah. yeah it's a brain. That's yeah. great, Len. I love no, it. No, thank you. Yes. So if you're interested in getting this, you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Len, where you can back me at the DTNS lover 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 level and get it immediately. Or you can go the old fashioned way. Go to my online store and uh and pick it up you know, along with some other great DTNS art or just um, you know commission me that would be great too. yeah that's what i that. did 
Yeah. Well, Len, Thomas. good stuff as always. Um, and definitely check out his art. Uh, Dr. Nikki, really good stuff from you today. Wow. Thank you so best. much for sharing, um, you know, where, what you've been up to. Let folks know where they can keep up with the rest of your work. Yeah. So once again, you guys can go find everything I do at NicoleAckermans.com. And more sheep, more goats, more brains, every, all the time. Nice. Patrons, let us know what you thought. Let us know in the comments or by email, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We will be back on Monday with a regular show, live, Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And we hope you have a wonderful weekend. Cheers. This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show and Good Day Internet were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and co-host Rob Dunwood. Video producer Joe Kuntz. Producer at large Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer Dan Campos. Science correspondent Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Social media producer and moderator Zoe Detterding. Our mods, Beatmaster, W. Scottis One, BioCal, Captain Kipper, Steve Guadarrama, Paul Reese. Matthew J. Stevens, a.k.a. Gadget Virtuoso, and J.D. Galloway. Mod and video hosting by Dan Christensen. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A., Acast, and Len Peralta. Live art performed by Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Tatiana Matias. Patreon support from Tom McNeil. And our contributors this week included Scott Johnson and Justin Robert Young. Thanks to all the patrons who make the show possible. Good day, Internet. Good day. All righty. Woo. We Good finished. stuff. We All did right. it. I'm heading to fun? the games, so I'm going to log on. All right. Go Guardians. Go Guardians. Thank oh, you. Go Guardians. Go, Guardians. Go, go Dodgers, I guess. No. Thanks. No. Never go Dodgers. <laughs> I'll pass right. that along to Eileen. Okay, no bye. Yankees, at least, though. All right. Take care. Bye. Right. Bye. Uh, yeah, we 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 uh, I, uh, officially Daily Tech News Show does not take a position on the National League Championship Series because Ron <laughs> Richards is a big Mets fan, Eileen is a big Dodgers fan, so you know we got to. Yeah, well, okay. Eileen's your co-host, Sarah. I mean, I know she's my <laughs> wife, but <laughs> <laughs> what takes precedence? Tom's like that's that's up to you. Um, no, I I I I don't hate Dodgers fans. I think Dodgers fans are very nice people, but Giants forever, and Dodgers should lose at all times. That's mm -hmm. a, that's an appropriate thing for a Giants fan to say, and I would expect nothing else. Yeah, um, I would say the same thing about the Cubs as a Cardinals fan. So there you go. There you go. Uh, let's look at the GDI titles. We got some DTNS titles in here too, but we already titled DTNS because it's already out. Uh, but the top vote getters for GDI, uh, Saray TW, if Len, then Quiz. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, and then your starter for Len from Batfink 2001. What about Naked Mall Rats? <laughs> Naked I mall. like Uber Mall Rats. Oops, all GDI. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all GDI. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Hellraiser Flies. They really do look like them. Don't piss off Picasso. Don't wow, we've it. got so many titles. 55 GDI titles. I... 155 made a lot of oh, 155 oh, votes yeah. votes yeah don't you miss the cold war <laughs> <laughs> i mean more than anything it was so problem fun. with any social media platform yeah it's we true. just thought about they're all clear energy a lot breathing with fava bean gas <laughs> <laughs> right. i like if dr nikki says it's cool it's cool from Moose. <laughs> I love Third Space, The Final Frontier. That's great. <laughs> third Space, The Final Frontier. <laughs> oh. <laughs> A friend of mine the other day was like, yeah, my mom doesn't believe that Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. And I'm like, why? And he's like, I don't know. She just My thinks, answer to that is we literally didn't happen. have rocks. We have the rocks. It's Go more interesting. Them. It's more interesting to me if it was my mom didn't believe Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. Why is that? She thinks it was someone else. <laughs> no, she's <laughs> that like, that was I definitely don't know. not. 
<laughs> no, but I think it would be more funny because yeah. there's plenty of people like who don't believe the moon landing really happened. But it'd be funnier you. if it was like, no, I just think it wasn't it Neil. Was, it, it was, was Buzz else. Aldrin. He was it was friends. my dad. <laughs> it was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> he was the <laughs> real one. You know, Neil, Neil Armstrong was an credit. actor. <laughs> he went second. Time. Yeah. Right. Um, what should we call GDI? Um... I like Oops All GDI, but I don't know if that's supposed to stay a secret. Oops All GDI is funny. Yeah, we can do that. That would work. Any uh, any other options going once? <laughs> I mean, go. I kind of like if Dr. Nikki says it's cool, it's cool. Uh, that's a good one. I actually like that one, too. I can't Should we go with that? that. All right. So if Dr. Nikki says it's cool, it's cool. Moose it's cool. Too, so Yay. Yeah. Nice. Yay. All right. That's it for the supersized GDI. Twitch folks, you're headed over to Tech Tangents. Tell them we said hi. YouTube folks, thanks for hanging out. It was good to see all the super chats and everything until, uh, oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. I just remembered I'm supposed to do the uh, the thank yous, aren't I? Still, I almost forgot. Should I still do them? Do that. Yes. Can, yes. Is there time? Is there yes. time? Yes. All right. Kill the music, Tom. Nth Mike resubscribed for 63 months at tier one. Uh, they've been subscribed for 64 months. Rabbit41 cheered us with 46 bits. Ryan in Minneapolis for 12 months at uh, Prime level. Thank you, Ryan. No Warp Zones followed us yesterday. And we got uh, Laminar Rainbow Super Sticker, two Super Stickers from C-Spawn, and a Super Chat from Sang, who said, here's some Google money. Also, Chef Edward Lee was robbed. That's Culinary Class Wars reference. I got that reference, Sang. All right, that's it. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye. Bye, Internet. Bye. Good weekend. Bye, Discord.